Hello, Jeff Zwerink. Welcome again to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas and how they relate to the truth of Christianity. Today, I'm joined by Hugh Ross, founder and president of Reasons to Believe, and we're going to talk about the implications of the Arctic sea ice melting. Hugh, it's good to have you here today. Oh, thank you, Jeff. So, I mean, we, we've we know that uh, up at the poles, you got a lot of ice down in Antarctica, a lot of ice up in the Arctic. Uh, you know, at least down in Antarctica, you've got a continent underneath it all. Uh, but we're noticing, or it seems like there are some measurements that really do indicate that the ice in the Arctic is disappearing. Kind of tell us some of the data, what's out there and how do we know that the Arctic ice is melting? Well, a paper just got published where they basically took the Arctic Ocean and broke it up into seven different zones and be able to measure how much sea ice has been lost in each zone relative to 1750 and relative to 17 or probably 1979. So basically looking what happened uh, over about a 200 year period and then what has happened uh, over the uh, last 40 years. So, so, both let, so let me ask a question there. Um, you know, it's obvious kind of how we might have uh, data from the 1970s and even today, but how do we have data from the 1750s? We have data from the 1750s because that was a time when Arctic exploration was a big deal for European countries. And so they were there and uh, so they had very careful log notes. Uh, so we have fairly decent data as to how much ice was there. Uh, and we got satellite data from 1979 forward. So as they look at this data, what are the things that they found in terms of how the ice has changed over the last 200 and then more recent years? Well, there's two areas uh, where in the summertime they virtually have lost all their ice. That's the Barents Sea and the Kara Sea. Uh, those are the regions above Norway and Western Siberia. So there the summer uh, sea ice loss is uh, like 99% um, and particularly dramatic in the last 40 years. Uh, all, the, all seven zones have had significant sea ice loss, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40%. Uh, but then they also did some winter sea ice loss measurements as well. And what did they find when they compared the summer to the winter? Was the, the ice just gone or much less all the time? Or was it primarily in, uh, well, presumably the summer, because that that's when it would be warmer? Well, the Kara Sea and the Barents Sea have experienced about a 40% loss uh, since 1750. Uh, but the other five seas, we're talking one, two, and 3%. So Is that has, during the summer or the winter or both? The winter, no. Uh, those five zones have had very significant uh, summer sea ice loss, but the winter sea ice loss were down at the one, two, and three percent level. Only the Karen Barren Sea have we seen significant winter sea ice loss. I mean, given that you just expect the summer to be warmer, what's is there any real significance to the fact that the sea ice loss is greater in the summer as compared to the winter? Well, you would expect to see a winter, a summer sea ice loss to be greater than winter sea ice loss, um, and particularly as a result of global warming. Because, uh, you know, if you warm up the temperature by, say, five degrees centigrade in the wintertime, uh, you're going from, say, 50 below uh, to 45 below, uh, you're still going to get the sea ice building up. It's simply not going to be warm enough to melt a lot of ice. So you'd expect that it wouldn't make that much difference. Um, and you would expect significant difference. So it basically documents global warming has had a major impact on Arctic sea ice. And we see that in the summer. On the other hand, in terms of this being a risk for bringing on the next ice age, uh, my analysis, and this wasn't commented on the paper, but my analysis was uh, until we see significant winter sea ice loss, uh, we're not at an imminent point of bringing on the next ice age. So let's explore that a little bit. So it sounds like the fact that the summer sea ice is so visible kind of serves almost like a canary in the coal mine. It, it's it's a harbinger that something's going on and we need to pay attention to it. Right. Uh, but now, so, so you're mentioning that if the sea ice loss is too great, it may actually bring on another ice age. That's a, that's a little counterintuitive because you think, okay, you got global warming, that's going to heat the planet up and we're going to end up in a, in a steam house rather than an ice age. How does that play out? 
Paul, say if you were to melt the polar winter ice cap, and instead of that ice reflecting sunlight with 60% efficiency, the open ocean liquid water would reflect it with only 6% efficiency, which means that Arctic Ocean area would be absorbing a lot more heat from the sun. As it heats up that Arctic water, it's going to produce water vapor, and being winter, it will fall as snow over Canada and Siberia and Northern Europe. On the other hand, if you melt the summer sea ice, it's warm enough that that extra water vapor will fall as rain. And so it's not going to lead to the accumulation of ice over Siberia and Canada and uh, Northern Europe. It's the winter sea ice we need to pay attention to because if that melts away, uh, we're going to be producing a whole lot more snowfall and that's going to lead to the accumulation of ice and bring on the next ice age. That, that's a very interesting point. And again, I think it's just a little counterintuitive because you think, okay, if, if, the, if the ice isn't there, uh, it's actually the melting of the ice that brings on the ice age. So uh, as Christians, how do we think about this? Well, I think it tells us we really need to pay attention to what's happening with the winter sea ice. And we do see that there's been significant loss in the Kara Sea and the Barents Sea. If we see significant loss in just one more uh, of the seven seas, we need to take immediate drastic action because uh, you don't want more snow falling on Canada and Siberia. And we notice from the ice age cycle, once you get say a doubling of snowfall uh, over Canada, you get a buildup of thousands of feet of ice over 50% of the North American continent in just a thousand years. So, it, you know, it seems without a doubt that this has become a highly politicized issue that, um, you know, there's, to, you know, the error on the left seems to be that this is catastrophic, we're going to destroy humanity. The error on the right is, ah, there's no bit, this is nothing even to worry about. How do we navigate that in a way where we can actually produce, to, to, to live on what the science has to say, to use that to get a good principle, but also take care of humanity as well? Well, Jeff, we're not at an imminent crisis yet, uh, but this means we need to be taking very careful attention of what you call that canary in the coal mine. Because all the attention has been on measuring the loss of summer sea ice. We need to be measuring the loss of winter sea ice. And if we don't see any significant loss, we're in good shape. If we start seeing significant loss, then we need to start worrying. Right now, no cause for worry. But uh, it's basically a sign we need to be doing more measurements and paying very careful attention and uh, be prepared with a plan of initiation. If we start seeing significant loss of winter sea ice, this is the immediate actions we're going to take. Well, thanks, Hugh. I really appreciate your comments. You know, when you talk about global warming, that is a highly politicized issue that often obscures the scientific and biblical truths that are built into this discussion. You know, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org and check out Hugh's latest blog on this topic. It's what will happen if the Arctic sea ice loss continues. It will tremendously equip you to be familiar with the scientific issues. And I would encourage you especially to go in and study what scripture has to say about how God has created creation for his purpose, but also gives us charge over it so that you can cut through the political rancor and heat to get to the heart of the issue of what's going on scientifically and how do we treat this well as Christians and be able to use this to not only help take care of the planet for the planet, but also for humanity.